is the classic car market on Bring a Trailer. Cars and Bids, P-Car Market, and Haggerty Marketplace seeing a soft landing, or is it just softening? We've got new auction predictions right now. The bidding starts now. Maybe, if I hit the thing. No! Bid Nerds is your daily YouTube car game show. Where we predict the online auction results of the most interesting cars on Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, Haggerty Marketplace, and more. It's just like the Price is Right game show. Play along and see if you can beat the nerds. Yep, it's time for a brand new episode of Bid Nerds. Welcome, Nerd Herd. We are live. We are back. We took a weekend off. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, we had a great time up in the Pacific Northwest visiting our good friend Alex Raphael at Max RPM uh, for Thank you, Alex. event. Thank you, Alex. You are the man. Uh, we were doing an event for uh, the, the, the Northwest region of the PCA and talk about a bunch of jagoffs. Uh the <laughs> members were great. Uh we had I a great if we time. Would bash them. Yeah, yeah, but uh John Woo. Mueller, this uh ancient crusty old guy that runs their tech Jeez. things or something like that was a complete he, a-hole. Uh and he, I'm calling him out. There it is. He 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 PCA'd us and man it didn't take long to jump into that one. Um yeah, yeah that was Anything, whatever the polarity of hospitality is, that's what we were shown. And um, yeah, but uh, other than that, other than him, him yeah. specifically, him and his attitude, we had a great time. The members were great. Alex, thank you so much, buddy, for um, hosting us and having us uh, in an attempt to be a part of your uh, big event up there at Max RPM in Breverton which was just a beautiful day. Uh, the cars were cool. The shop was amazing. His staff at the shop were all really down to earth guys. Here's the thing, JP, I, you and I didn't talk about this, but everybody we know that's in the Porsche repair business says they can't get young technicians. And Alex has like five of them. Did you yeah, notice that? I did, like he's yeah. got four whiz kids who you would trust to work on your car if it was easy to get your car there. I mean, if you're anywhere in the Pacific Northwest, I would bring my car to him and have him do the work on it because he's got these young, smart, passionate kids that look like they've been doing it their whole lives. And uh, and yet nobody in the dealership side or the independent repair facility side can find a young technician who even like doesn't know what they're doing but would just be willing to apprentice. Nobody can find that kid. And Alex has three, four, five of them by my count. I just, anyway, great, great guy, great shop, great staff, uh, great weather, which is shocking for Seattle. And I, JP, thank you for bringing me with you. I had an effing blast. What a, what a fun time. Like I literally, the whole time we were together, I kept saying, well, when are we coming back? Like, mm -hmm. can we do that in the summer? And when's the weather? When can we count on the weather being like this so that you and I can come back and drive this whole thing in a, in a real car instead of this broke pitch Camry that we had? <laughs> so anyways, I had, a, I had a great time. We retraced, uh, you know, every stage of your youth uh, right up until um, yeah. you first that uh, you showed me the spot on the beach where you first made love to Rochelle. That was really, that was very, I got <laughs> right. kind of weepy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just showed you well, the we pictures. Had a great time, that man. didn't actually happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, really fun time. Uh, you and Rochelle used to live on the beach, and you took me to your favorite fish and chips. I think it was called Spuds yep. on the beach, um, and that was that was <laughs> yeah, it was it was incredible, man. I had a blast. It was so much fun. So Seattle, who knew? Great time I, up there again. Thanks, uh, Alex at Max RPM. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, all right. Well, shout out to our good friends up in the Pacific Northwest, just a little bit east over in Idaho, our friends at our Smiths. Uh, you guys are going, hey, what time is it? It's time for a brand new Bid Nerds. Uh, that's because your watch was probably recently serviced, or maybe you got your fine Swiss watch at our Smiths. Uh, fine Swiss repair. We're, we're, we're not seeing. Oh, there's Anthony. Anthony's hanging out. What up to all the nerds? That's our Smiths, guys. That's him. If you have a fine Swiss watch, make sure you have it serviced at a fine Swiss repair place like our Smiths. Also, uh, if you are in the market for a classic Porsche, but you don't want to deal with all this auction stuff, all the nonsense on the platforms, uh, just go right to the source. Go to 
Garden Classic. That's Garden Porsche of Las Vegas. Our friends over there always have an amazing selection of classic Porsches. Steve can always uh, help you find something if they don't have it. Uh, they've always got amazing uh, cars coming and going. Uh, they don't last long there, though. So if you reach out to Steve and you say, hey, I want fill in the blank, and he finds it for you, you better jump on it because uh, they only get the best. So give our friends at God and Classic a call if you're looking for a classic Porsche or if you need service or parts. All right, uh, let's get to the show. We opened it up with, uh, you know, it, we've been away for a week. Usually we're only away for a few days. Uh, but um, some crazy stuff's going on in the market. Is there a softening in the classic car market? Or has it been just a soft landing? Um, you know, we're starting to see, we're rolling into spring. This is usually kind of a good buying season. We start to see classic and sports cars start to bump up a little bit. We know that new cars, uh, nobody's buying new cars. Uh, regular old new cars are, uh, it's just really tough to sell them. If, you, if you're trying to sell a, a Jeep or a Dodge or a new, um, I don't know, Audi or J something like that, JP, you're having a hard time. Yeah. Is it? It, no, isn't it tough for the, the, the manufacturers just to build them right now, right? Like every, no. seems like every... Every what? manufacturer is didn't didn't Ford have like a big hang up where they weren't making cars for a long time and Porsche was like trickling well, out cars. No, no one's having a problem building them right now. They're all having wow. no problem building them. That's that's definitely that that was a problem a couple of years ago. The manufacturing I problem. I thought like it was a. Yeah, oh my I thought gosh. it was a problem just a couple of months ago. Wasn't there? Wasn't there something the big three couldn't get in their cars and they, they, there was like a run, like they weren't producing trucks and then Porsche had well, there was a, there delays was a, with some chips there. No, there's a, so there was a strike, uh, you know, at That's the end of last year for the yeah. American cars, but that helped the, the American car manufacturers that strike was like the worst time strike of all time because there was mm -hmm. already a massive softening i mean they were borderline crashing on the american car manufacturing side um and then there was a strike so all of a sudden they didn't have to make cars uh for a few months so that actually helped them but saved now, them money. yeah saved them from having to build cars that would not have sold because you can't sell uh, a dodge anything you can't sell a jeep anything you can't sell a honda anything mm -hmm. you can't i mean the only cars that are selling are hondas and toyotas um porsche uh porsche brand new porsches would sell but they are hung up all the uh vagcom stuff all the audis volkswagens uh and porsches are having a hard time because there's some kind of child labor law that apparently uh, was broken by VAGCOM somewhere along the production line. Uh, you know, that's oh, the thing. Cars boy. these days aren't built in Here one place. Go. You know, so it's, it's like, okay, so if you ordered a Porsche or if you ordered a new Audi, um, they're sitting in the port. They can't, they're, they're working on getting them in. Um, and, uh, you know, I was talking to our friends at the Audi store here in Henderson uh, the other day. We do uh, a lot of work with them. Great people. We'll get Luke on the show sometime too. You know, he was saying all their bread and butter cars, up, A4s Luke? and stuff like that. And they're just sitting in the port. They're just waiting to get them in. Uh, so it's going to be months before we see those cars coming in. But, you know, so you've got car, you know, manufacturing manufacturers like like Porsche and Audi they're run by hedge fund managers those guys are have always been kind of smart on reducing uh, reducing their supply in order to keep prices up well then you compound it with something like this that was unforeseen <laughs> now you have a massive shortage so yeah if they have a Porsche they'll sell it but the chances are they don't have anything in stock so it's either they don't have anything in stock or they have way too much stuff in stock I mean CDRJ dealerships most of them have you know like a 700 day supply of Hornets have you ever even heard of a Hornet like what the hell is a nope. Dodge Hornet that's a car that exists that no. you can go buy right now that no, no. one even knows is there but uh, but that is that we're not here to talk about new cars we'll have Ray Shevska maybe talk a little bit about that when he comes and joins us uh, this Sunday. Sunday yeah Ray Shevska from from Car Edge and uh, Ray and Zach show. Uh, those guys do, man, you guys think that we're on all the time live? These two fellas, father and son, they are on every freaking day like five days yeah. a week they're on in the morning and i think they even do a saturday night show so uh those guys are the hardest wow. working guys a, in podcast john, yeah 
John, John, that's what hard work looks like, you know? I don't know. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I, I just uh, can't Soft hands. That. Soft hands. Soft hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So uh, <laughs> we'll have a real expert on, uh, and he can tell us about new cars. It'll be fun kind of, uh, you know, wringing his neck a little bit on this classic stuff because I know that's not their thing. Um, so it'll be it'll be a good time uh, having a good time the, with them. And then uh, we also have uh, Brad will probably be joining us from Ideal uh, sometime in the next week or so. We uh, met him oh, wow. in uh, Bremerton, so that's happening. We've yeah. got some big that, that, hitters coming there was up. A- There was a moment there. So like we spent Saturday afternoon listening to a gal at our table at lunch, talk about this guy incessantly. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of take credit for every right turn he made in his career of which there were many, which was, which was comical. It was good that you and I kept our iced tea down and didn't spit it all over the table. Um, but ironically, your good buddy and my new best friend, uh, T Cruz introduced us to him at a car show. And this is the this is the JP itinerary. We go to Seattle, and on our way to the airport, we're gonna stop by and see two car shows. And then T Cruz calls us and says, "Hey, you guys got to come to this third car show on the lake on Lake Washington." So we we jump on over there. We park the car on the side of a hill. JP parks it like sideways in the dirt, and uh, we hop a fence and we crawl down this hill. And here's this show. And T Cruz is like, "Hey, Brad from Ideal is right there. You guys got to meet him." So T. Cruz walks us over and says, hey, Brad, I want to introduce you to JP and Deeb from the Binders. He goes, I love your guys' show. And I mean, you should have seen the look on JP's face. I had to pick him up off the floor. It was re- it was really great. After hearing how amazing Ideal is and, and all his following, it was great to find out he is also a member of the Nerd Herd. There you go. How you like me now? Yeah, well, they have a real show, and we just, uh, you know, screw around. Uh, so uh, well, thanks to the Nerd Herd for helping us, us get bigger. Yeah, cool. so maybe this will help yeah, a little man. bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome for sure. stuff. Well received in Seattle. He's actually in Oregon. It's just it's fun to see that how many people have heard of the nerds. Um, that was really fun. I'm glad that those two guys are coming on with us. Hopefully in the next week. So we'll see. Very good. All right. Well, to those of you in the nerd herd, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. We see you there in the group. Uh, go ahead and hit that you know thumbs up button if you haven't done it already. Uh, that really helps us out. Uh, that gets this uh, gets the show served to other people that might want to join the nerd herd. So help us out with that, and let's get to. Uh, reconciling our predictions from the last episode. Now that was a week ago. Uh, so uh, some there were some pretty big surprises in this. We but some of the stuff that we made predictions on were cars that didn't even close till today. Uh, what was the first car on the list from the last episode, Michael D? All right, so let's start with P Car Market JP. We had the 2010 Porsche 997.2 GT3 RS with just 4,000 miles. This car is located in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. It's a dealer consignment. This is a car that we had seen previously on, uh, I think it was BAT, where it didn't sell. Then the car comes back up uh, for sale, and we took a look at it and wondered, you know, a car that had been in Canada for a while, it's in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin at the moment, super low miles, but um, it's in kilometers because this car was a Canadian market car. Um, Look, Everything that you could say nice about this car has been said. This is one of the last great analog, you know, almost hypercar uh, driving experiences uh, from Imperia. It's hard to believe, JP, this car is almost 15 years old now. Um, Still fast by today's standards, an incredible driving machine. They only made a few of them, and prices have been soaring. The market on these, we assumed, had softened just a little bit. And again, I think this car had failed to sell uh, just a couple of months earlier when we looked at it. Um, If I'm remembering correctly, it's been a long weekend. And please excuse me. I don't have a soundboard where I can just mute my microphone every time I cough. So please forgive me, uh, Heard. But anyway, I like the car. But again, we typically don't know what to expect from P-Car Market. So as is the case, we normally underbid when it comes to them because we most of the time we don't think they're going to do it. Every once in a while, they surprise us and we eat a little bit of crow and we laugh about it. Um, but here with a car that I thought, you know, Canadian origin, not a U.S. car, um, having run recently and failed to sell. <laughs> I thought the chips were stacked against this one. So I started the bidding at $289,997. JP put ten grand on that bid at $299,997. Rami took the under at $279,000. And Alex from Max RPM, Alex Raphael, who was a guest nerd, for about half the show because he had to prepare for that big event that JP and I flew up to. He went high on this car. He said $325,000. 
So JP, do we have, I think we do have some of them nerds. So 300 by Randy. Anthony was at three and a quarter. Dark Closet, 310, love the handle. Gerd, who's almost always right, 310,000 bucks. Love you, Gerd. Uh, Hans, 348 with stars. What were the stars about, uh, Randy B? Why are the stars there? And then uh, Racer Nerd at 290. Racer Nerd, now that's the handle of all time. Um, so JP, this is a shock. Here we go. So $335,000 where, hold on now, let me finish. It failed to sell at the close. It failed to sell. And then five minutes later, it sold for three hundred and forty thousand dollars. So three thirty-five is the hammer at that number. Alex wins, um, but three forty, I'd say within the hour is what it took to sell the car. Um, so Alex still wins because it's the over. But um, interesting, you know how uh, P car market likes to get on the phone and bring the sellers and the buyers together to try and hammer out a deal. That's exactly what they did here successfully. And listen. While we take the piss out of these guys for acting like they're closers in a closed room where they're hammering out deals and they're just grinding you, um, many of us that have bought cars, especially at a domestic dealer, have been through that process. It's very unpleasant. Um, and we take the piss out of these guys for behaving like that and, and not always being ethical. But this, what they do here, it's not that nobody gets on the phone and tries to make deals post-hammer. I think everybody does that. But what they do here, they, they you know, it, it, there's something to it. It's part of their business model and every once in a while it succeeds and they hammered out a deal here for what is arguably a really high watermark for even the model in this particular market, in this climate. Um, I'm impressed with that number at $340,000. I honestly didn't think it would get there. I'm not even sure I would say this car was worth that. And the fact that they got that and that's what they're publishing, I tip my hat to them and say, hey, you know what, P-Car Market, good on you, fair, fair play. Uh, JP, I don't know if you'll share my enthusiasm for the job they did. Um, again, we don't like their approach, but when the result doesn't smell, you got to say, eh, eh, we, there, there they go. They just made a couple bucks. So, And and look, PCAR Market might not have made a dime on this because they might have given away their gross on both sides. We don't know. That's also the magic to it is that they can keep that part private. But I do like that they posted the post-hammer results, and uh, and I, like I said, I, I commend them for that. So, JP... <laughs> So, uh, so Anthony thinks that I should say something nice about P car market and I'll say that I like the color of their logo. Um, so there you there go, go. P car market. Now look, uh, they get the, do they get the job done and I, I've been in a position where, um, I have, because I wouldn't deal with someone who was even more of an a-hole than me, uh, lost out on cars that I should have just sucked it up and bought the dang thing and dealt with the guy that was a jerk. Sometimes when the car is good, when the deal is good, when the deal is right, you just got to suck it up and go, all right, fine. Who cares? Right? Because ultimately what's best for you as the buyer or you as the seller, um, you know, sometimes it means having to deal with someone that you don't actually like. This car was spectacular. And the fact is you just can't get one of these. I mean, there's, if you went out and scoured the internet, how many of these are you going to find for sale right now? Um, you six. know, six total, yeah, yeah. you know, so that's it. So your choice is pretty darn limited and, uh, you know, P car market does get after it when the auctions don't close. It's that whole sale after thing that always kind of makes me a little queasy. It's like, could you, I just, I wonder what those calls were like. How much pressure was in the was was go it just it just makes it feel all skeezy. Ultimately, someone got a great car. Ultimately, uh, you know, it all worked out, and the seller got big money for their car. So great, good job. Um, and every now and then they pull one out. Uh, yeah, but uh, I still I'm still not a big fan of P car market, and still would absolutely not recommend anyone. Uh, sell their car with them. I, I don't know, maybe buying a car through them doesn't necessarily sound like the worst idea in the world if you know that you're going to get that phone call and you know that when you make the bid that they're going to take your money uh, right. you know, uh, immediately and not say, give yeah. it back to you uh, till way immediately. later. Yeah, so it's uh, there's still yeah, scuzz. Tough. I still think they're scuzz balls, but hey, you know, it wouldn't be the first time that a scuzz ball dealership sold a really nice car. So whatever. Um, congrats. Good job, P-Car Market. Wow. You got one done. 
Wow, JP, that's the nicest thing you've ever said about Pcar Market. How did those? I words said I like the color of, of their logo. <laughs> I like the color of oh the logo. Goodness. All right. Uh, so great car. What do you guys think of the results of this GT3 RS on Pcar Market? Our Pcar Market uh, are are they just a bunch of nice guys that are just misunderstood, uh, and <laughs> everyone should just go on over there and and say, "Wow, you guys are really nice guys." Thanks for the opportunity <laughs> to sell me a car. An opportunity. Um, <laughs> Those guys are swell. Yeah, they're really send swell. them a basket of fruit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, again, uh, yeah. What do you think of the results? Let us know in the comments below. Would you sell your car <laughs> with P Car Market? Would you go through that rigmarole? Let us know. Uh, it's always great to hear from the nerds and the nerd opinions. Uh, all right, Michael Deeb. What other car did we make a prediction on on the last episode? Did, did file this one under the JP? Why didn't you buy this car? Mm. Uh, result, um, John. You picked for us. This super cool 1987 Porsche 911 Carrera Targa that was on cars and bids showing 65,000 original miles out of Houston, Texas. Our car, it looks modified because it's a Targa with a wing, which is not typical. And it's got these aftermarket Momo 17-inch wheels, which are cool, but don't look the part on this car. The wheel is a 90s style wheel and the car has 70s style, 70s edge. So they're the wrong wheels on the car. So if you don't know G bodies really well and you glance at the pictures, this looks like somebody's beat up, modified, you know, youthfully owned uh, 911. But if you peer closely and we all did, there's a lot of really cool original Carrera Targa with a G50 gearbox sitting there that's barely been used. And so we wondered if this car might not just slip through the cracks to cars and bids an audience for an air-cooled Porsche that we think is thin. Or, you know, my God, bring a trailer has just captured the, marmot, the market for air-cooled Porsche anything. And I'm talking 356 up until the last of the 993s. Uh, Doug DeMiro hasn't sold many, and that's why you selected this car for us to see if he could do it. Um, so without further ado, JP, I thought the car, the hammer would stop at 65000 and I wondered if it would sell for that price. My guess is that probably not. John, you took the over at $69,911. Uh, sorry, Rami, um, who was in studio with us, said $65,911. He was trying to copy my bid but went over. Uh, and then Alex from Mar RPM Motorsports, um, Alex said seventy grand, basically taking the the bid just above you, JP. Um, in the herd, we got a sixty nine. We got Anthony at fifty six, which is really uh, bearish. Um, let's we'll see, Chris at sixty eight, uh, George at sixty six, seventy four for Hans, Kevin at fifty nine, nine eleven. That's a good bid. Ross at sixty seven. Thank you, Ross. I'm missing the one in front of uh, Racer. So, uh, racer was at so 65. V12 said 81,000 and Racer Nerd was at oh, 65, 911. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go back really quick to uh, Kevin. Kevin at $59,911. Um, ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. Um, so look at this. JP, the hammer fell at $60,500, but it's not that it was a good deal because the car failed to sell at that price. 34 bids. So it got good action. But the question begs. Did the car not look the part because of the wheels or does Doug just not have the air-cooled audience? Because you and I know these cars, and 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 for that matter, Alex and, and Rami did too, and we all really liked the car, but all our bids reflected the platform and not the value of the car because I think we all thought this is at least a $75,000 car. Um, it'll be interesting to see if you and I and the herd scope this car in the future popping up on somebody else's auction site. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, what's his name? Got it at 59 at, at $59,911 JP. He was basically $500 away from a Yahtzee. I won cause I was the low bid, but that bid in the herd was the one that would have got the prize. JP, you picked the car. You were putting it as a, as a test car for Doug DeMiro and cars and bids. They failed. Are you surprised? Um, I'll surprise you. Mm. This one's for Anthony. Uh, to the seller, they should have gone to P-Car Market. Um, this car was on the wrong platform, clearly. And uh, P-Car Market could have gotten this one done. Uh, there's no doubt about 
about it that this car would have done very well in P car market. Um, and you know, because a, a, a Porsche buyer can see through those silly wheels. Um, someone yeah. that knows what an 87 911 is Targa black on black can say, okay, well the wheels are the easiest thing to change and have, uh, you know, the best possible, uh, you know, overall impact on the image of the car wheels make or break a car. Um, and like you said, I, I actually kind of like the wheels. Are they, would they be my first choice? Those would be wheels that I'd slap on there. If like maybe the Fuchs were missing and they, and someone had put some like modern turbo twist on it, which, you know, sometimes you see stuff like that, you know, that would be a good alternative. And I think it's got kind of a cool outlaw look black on black on black on black. All right, fine. I could, I'd rock that, but no doubt about it. That car looks in and deserves uh Fuchs. We just published a video on uh, our Durfascination channel. Uh, it has uh, it stars our good friend Kevin Hunter uh, from the 80s band Wire Train, if you guys know that band. Uh, but we just published it. It came from, uh, it came from my TV show, uh, you know, Cars Unknown. Uh, and we call it, it's ethical modification. We basically, Kevin lays out a flow chart on what is ethical when it comes to modifying your classic Porsche. And uh, yeah. it's definitely stirred up a hornet's nest. Uh, we've had a lot of people commenting on that one. Sorry, we have some uh, technical issues there. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is one of those things that it, it's just sometimes you just got to kind of know what things you can do and what things you can't do when it comes to marketing the car. If it's your car, who the hell cares? That's my opinion. Some people have other opinions, but you know, if it's your car, you want to mod it and keep it, that's fine. Do whatever the heck you want. But when it comes to selling it, uh, there are certain things that are definitely going to bring you more money. Uh, the photos of this car were poor. The presentation in general was poor. And it was just kind That's of true. an unforced error. It would have been very easy to swap out these wheels, and they didn't do it. Uh, P-Car Market definitely could have gotten it done. Now, I'm not saying that they should go to P-Car Market over Bring a Trailer. I still think Bring a Trailer is definitely the better platform. Uh, but, you know, in P-Car Market's defense, having fewer cars means the cars that are there, especially when they're good. We just saw on that GT3 RS, um, you know, I think a lot of times what ha why P car market fails is because they whore themselves out and and allow just about any piece of crap car um, that someone submits on there so they can get a chance at it. Um, and a lot of times they basically do that kind of used car-y type thing where they where they kind of you know help the seller cover things up that, you know, they're not fully transparent like they are in cars and bids and uh, bring a trailer. And I was really hoping that Doug could make this one happen, honestly, because I'd like to see more air cooled cars on cars and bids. Um, I think it would be, it'd be great if it may, if they could make that work. They've, they've had great success with, Things like, you know, exotic cars and, and, and other classic cars. They've had Countach's, they've had old Ferraris, um, but for some reason they just can't get it done with what should have been uh, an easy putt. You know, uh, this, this shouldn't have been hard to sell a car. A G50, an 87 black on black G50 with low miles, that should have been no problem, but... Doug couldn't get it done. What do you guys think of the results of this air-cooled car on cars and bids? Is Doug DeMiro just too weird to sell an air-cooled car? Uh, or is there some other reason why it didn't happen? Did you guys see something that we didn't? Do you think it was the wheels? Uh, do you think it was the pictures? Let us know in the comments below. And uh, hey, let's re oh, yeah, really go ahead. quickly, um, Anthony made a comment there, JP, where he said, uh, that the guy should have taken the money, that he should have sold it at that price. And I just want to step in and say, I contest that. I don't think mm, so. I don't think that's I, good Anthony, I, I do understand what Anthony's saying, that the will the wheels were an indication of the car not being owned by a Porsche enthusiast, and that makes him concerned about how the car was looked after. Mm. I disagree with that. Nope. Um, I, I think it's easy to look at aftermarket wheels and red calipers, things that uh, don't look the part or look normal on a G-body, and have a concern that it was youthfully owned and maybe not think it, but I don't think that that's, um, it should be a red flag. I, I think you, it maybe it brings your antenna up, but I wouldn't shy away from that car. I think you look closely at the photos, you look at the service receipts and, and you look at the condition of the car. And to me, the car looked really well le looked after. Um, and when you think about the gearbox, um, the overall original condition of the car, despite the wheels, the wheels are an easy thing to, to put back to stock. Um, and then the low miles, 
Um, and I think that car is a winner. I, I think 75 would have been a song and 85 would have been in play. So, Anthony, I hear you, uh, but I just playfully contest that with you. I, I disagree. I think I think uh, he was right not to take the 60. Um, and it's a bummer that Doug couldn't find more money for him uh, for all the reasons that JP said. Poor presentation. Uh, and it was just kind of a whiff. P-Car Market, that car would absolutely do better. And bring a trailer, it'd be great. But you know what would be better is if he put the stock wheels back on and either sold his asset, which are the Momo wheels separately on peak car market, by the way, um, um, and then put the car stock and go back to any of the three platforms and get way more money than 60. So uh, although cars and bids would be my last choice for a G body. Uh, but Anthony, thank you for commenting. And uh, like I said, we're just having a little fun with it. But I, I yeah, thought, I, you know. Anthony, the idea that this guy is not a Porsche enthusiast is just absolute rubbish. I mean, those wheels are not terrible. I've definitely seen worse wheels. I've seen, you know, a, a Porsche purist. There's a lot of these that came from the factory uh, or probably the dealership with Chrome wheels. Um, and uh, I'm sorry for a Porsche purist. Maybe. This is definitely an indication it's not a purist, but a, not an indication that's not an enthusiast. I don't know, man. That just that doesn't fly with me because this is, these yeah. are absolutely wheels I would rock on one on this car. Again, I don't think they wouldn't be I my mean, first choice, but it wouldn't bother right. me to rock these. Yes, yes, I know, I get it, I freaking know. They, it belongs to have uh, Fuchs. Stop saying that it that, that that it needs Fuchs. We know. But this is a good alternative wheel. Uh, and every other indication on the car is that it was well kept and everything else was clean and looked great. Um, if it had a carbon fiber shift knob, that would be worse than mm -hmm. the black wheels. If it had yeah. a steering wheel, you know, like a nar not a Nardi, but what's the what's the Japanese steering wheel? I don't know, whatever. It had a steering wheel yeah. with like red inlets or if they had done like red rings around the uh around the gauges, then you start going, "Ugh, what's going on?" <laughs> yeah. But just a set or, of wheels red, that you don't like, red, that's just silly. That's no. just that's just silly. A, how about the the biggest red flag of all JP, the red painted fan? Oh my gosh. Well, okay. So just a little tip for you guys. If you see yeah. a red painted fan that Run. not only is an indication of someone's poor taste, but there was a company called, I believe it was Euromeister in Southern California. Mm -hmm. uh, that was pretty, a pretty big shop for around 10 years and they got busted for, uh, it turns out that they were charging customers to rebuild the engines, but they weren't actually doing it. They were just basically pulling the heads off pulling the valve covers off, replacing the valve cover gaskets, and then painting the fan red and feigning, painting the uh, valve cover uh, the valve covers red and saying that the engines were rebuilt. So a lot of those engines have receipts for having been rebuilt, but they were not. So run away from yeah. a Euromeister car. And, the, and those guys, yeah. yeah, those guys went out of business because of that. So that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Anthony says, these wheels are, are over like group four wheels. No, these are on it because they're cheap. No, that's just, they're Momos. That's just, that's rubbish. Yeah, cool. Yes, I know. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, four. Sure. Group four wheels would be better. <laughs> I don't know how long these wheels have been on there. I don't know why he chose those wheels. It's just a wheel that he didn't, <laughs> that, that you guys don't like get over it. <laughs> you know, it's mm. just not that big a deal. Um, and they're not, they're would, not, go ahead. I would like to see those momos on your nine, your nine, six, four C four cab. I think they'd look, that would look tits. really, really awesome. Uh, yeah, but they wouldn't look good as the cup ones that are on it, but who cares? Whatever. Yeah. Like what if this car had, like I could see, you know, a lot of people really like the cup two wheels and put them on everything. You see a lot of G bodies mm. with cup two wheels. My nine, six, four came with cup two wheels and it was like, okay, it looked good, but it didn't look right. Um, cause it, they were cup two wheels. You gotta get cup one wheels. Cup two wheels are like ubiquitous. They came on so many different Porsches and so many people put them on the cars that they weren't right. I would definitely rather have these Momos than cup twos. What about that? Mm -hmm. I don't know enough about the wheels. Uh, let us know in the comments below what you guys think. And let's move on to the next car. What do we got? All right, JP. We also looked at this, uh, 1985 Mazda RX seven that Sahan submitted for us. This car was over on Bring a Trailer, showing 35,000 original miles in this stunning tender blue metallic paint job with gray cloth interior. The car looks to be in immaculate condition. The car was detailed to a very high standard, and then they photographed it, you know, kind of against all odds, not in a photo booth, but on the showroom floor at night, and the car and the photos came looking out, like came out looking 
really, really nice. Um, so I think this car was destined to overachieve. One, it's a rare shade. Two, it's in rare condition. And three, we see a very inexpensive car with a high standard of production and presentation. And so uh, it was a great submission by Sahan. The car was running at no reserve on BAT out of Wall Township, New Jersey, by a place, uh, the seller Michael Motorcars. So, uh, JP, we all liked the car and wondered how far one of these RX-7s could go. I am, of course, the most enthusiast of the group. Uh, I started the bidding at $36,000, making me the high man without even having a look at the other bids. John was way more pragmatic on the car, going $30,007. Rami in studio said $33,000. And by this hour, we had lost Alex, who had to go back to work. Um, so, JP, do we have the bids from Randy B? Haven't yes, seen them yet. The Haven't RX7? seen them yet. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll just jump to the result. Um, John, the car did well. It sold for $25,000 on 27 bids. Now, considering our enthusiasm, but also taking into account the fact that RX-7s are just not collector cars, are you surprised by that result? Because I don't see how you're going to get a nicer one of these cars come to market and do better than that within the next six months. I don't see that. Like, to me, that's the nicest RX-7 I've, I feel like I've ever seen as far as the way it looks and how clean it was. I mean, it looked absolutely showroom condition, uh, like a brand new car, um, and and made it to, with the wheels and the color. The car looked more upmarket than they ever did when they were new. Um, so at $25,000, are, are we to believe that's all the money that an RX-7 can bring? Because I don't see how you're going to bring one that's going to take more than that that isn't like wildly modified with turbos and suspension and stuff. What do you think? Yeah, it's such a beautiful car, and it is a shame that it didn't get more. I am surprised. Yeah, but right? um, this kind of goes to what we're talking about at the top of the show. Is there is there a crash when it comes to classic cars, um, or is this representative of a soft landing? One, this is the nicest kind of first-gen RX-7 we've seen in a very long time. This car should bring some pretty big money, but... $25,000 is more than I've seen for a first gen RX-7 in years. Um, yeah. That is a lot of dough for a little car that could, um, and a car that doesn't really perform all that well compared to a lot of other stuff out there. Um, but for twenty five grand, I don't know what you get that performs as well, you know, on MR2, um, you know, a... Uh, uh, a, an RX-7, a newer RX-7 or a Mark II Volkswagen or something like that. I mean, this car really does give you that performance. I think the problem with this car, though, is that the, the problem with this car is that it's just, you know, everyone knows that they're just impossible to keep on the road right now. And that's the, that's the hard part is if you own something like this and you actually want to make it a driver, um, you're going to be really hard pressed to find someone uh, that knows how to, you know, it, it's almost like driving or owning an old Ferrari. You know, you're just yeah. going to be paying through the nose to keep it maintained, to find parts, all those types of things. Uh, but for a car that's clearly not going to, uh, really appreciate that much. Uh, a great car for a collector, someone who's really into RX-7s uh, and, you know, the Wankel engine and that kind of stuff. If you have a collection of other cars and this is and you have a slot in your garage uh, for another cool car, this is a great one. You know what? I would rather roll up to almost any cars in coffee in this than I would in any new Ferrari. <laughs> There's no Ferrari built in the last five years that I would rather drive uh, to the car show um, than this car. I mean, this is just, this car is just oozing uh, nostalgia and fun. Uh, and maybe it's just a great way to get into an enthusiast car. Um, and John, if you don't have a slot in your garage for it, could you not just stand it up and put it in a broom closet? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, what do you guys, what do you guys think of the results of this little RX seven? Was that stolen? Does that represent a, a true, you know, kind of, uh, softening of the classic market or do you realize that hey yeah do you think this th this result shows that hey we're having a soft landing cars like this are still bringing 25 grand uh is that a good result let us know in the comments below and also what would you do with this car if you had it is this a car that you would just drive or is this a car that you would collect uh love hearing from you guys uh let's move on to the next car that we made a prediction on the last episode 
All right, JP, the last car we picked uh, is one you selected. It's a 2022 Altima GTR. This car is on cars and bids, showing just 500 miles on the odometer. And although the Altima has been being made for like over 20 years now, this car sets itself apart because of the list of equipment that's on it that is not coming to other Altima bids, uh, including air conditioning and a full leather interior. Our car is dressed up with some really sick 18-inch uh, wheels. It's got um, racing brake calipers by, I think, AP, 18-inch um, OZ wheels, AP racing brakes, fully adjustable coilover suspension. Um, and then uh, the big news, of course, is the motor. So, um, you know, I think you can select your block, but the person who built this car did a supercharged 7-liter Chevrolet-based V8 rated at 604 horsepower and 596 pound foot of torque um and that's dyno that's at the tires um and then all of that is sent to the ground through a porsche sourced g50 52 five-speed manual transmission how ironic is that jp um listen this car is super cool the only thing i don't like about it really um i would put a prototypo on it and i would get rid of the wood on the dash but everything else about this car is pretty sick this car is a couple of stickers or a full livery away from being like absolutely cool. Imagine showing this up at a track day and embarrassing GT3 owners. I mean, this car is probably flat out. So really neat car. A lot of these cars don't bring a lot in the secondary market, but so many of them are a lot older um, and don't have the same um, components that this car has because this car was built just in the last couple of years. So with that in mind, JP, not being able to find very many comps for this car, we were all guessing at the result. So I said $75,000, and by the time we got through, it was hard to believe that if it made seventy-five dollars it would sell because it certainly seems there's a lot more car on the photos. JP, you took the over at $85,000, and Rami went to $110,000 because he liked the car and he loves horsepower. Who knew? So let's see. Randy's at $89,900. Uh, Anthony's at eighty-four. dollars Dark Closet at seventy six. dollars He's down there with me. Uh, Gerd at 92.9, uh, Hens at 81, uh, Kevin at 85, I see V12 at 98, and uh, somebody else is there at 93,000. Uh, so the 93,000 is a good bid. And uh, what did it, what were the think? results? What were the results? Yeah. So, uh, oh, and the first one, Randy at 89,950 is very good. Here's the thing $91,600 on cars and bids where it's sold. 47 bids it took to get there, JP. Um, I Look, by the time you and I got done with this car, no matter what it would come to, it felt like it was a bargain. Like You'd love to go out and order one of these, but I imagine it's 150 to 200 grand just based on what you get. So to buy one with 500 miles on it for $91,000, I, I, I don't know anything about it, but that sounds like a screaming deal. I'd say it was well bought. Do you think this car would have or could have brought more money on another platform, and that would include new assets as well. What do you think, JP? Did he? Did the seller leave money on the table by coming here with those images? Should he have done better somewhere else? Yeah, this is, again, another, even though this car sold and was closed, I think this is another fail for Doug, uh, you know, which is weird because Doug is the weird guy. And yeah, this is a weird car, but you ain't building one of these for no 90 something thousand dollars. Uh, no you way. are going to be spending six figure well into the six figures. Uh, I was watching the close of this auction. And I noticed the name curious office. My good friend, Kelly Smith was bidding on this thing. And, uh, we're ta I'm like, Hey, are you going to buy this thing? He's like, yeah, what do you think? And I sent him a picture of what is it? The nine six two with the Coca-Cola livery. I'm like, just yeah. put the livery. He's like, oh my God, that'd be great. Um, and, you know, we were discussing, he's like, yeah, there's no way you could build this car for that much money. But he was concerned. Uh, the big problem with this car is because it's so weird um, that, uh, yeah, I'm blaming it on Doug. I think this car would have done better on BAT. I don't think it would have done any better on cars and bids, or I'm sorry, not cars and bids, but uh, uh, P car. I think this car would have gotten like 50 grand on P car. Um, there's just not enough audience <coughs> there. Um, but I, but Chris's, or uh, I'm sorry, Kelly's uh, concern about the car was that he's like, well, if I buy this thing, I don't know if, I, if I'll ever be able to sell it. 
Like who buys this car? Um, so, you know, and he's got a, Fer- I was really hoping he would buy the thing so we could do a Ferrari FF versus this car because they're kind of worth about the same. And, uh, this car has got to have way more performance, a uh, little bit scary. Uh, would you drive this thing hard? That thing looks like it's, uh, might kill this? You. yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd want to be on a closed course. The thing is, this car would be an absolute blast on the Overton run, but I, I could also see you getting killed on the Overton run. So I, I think I'd much rather be on a closed course with this thing um, where there's some runoff and some barriers. But, uh, I, man, I imagine the performance is incredible. The thing that scares me about this, JP, is it's just so much torque and the car weighs so is so light. I think, <clears throat> I think if you're actually going to drive it, you would owe it to yourself to put a massive rear wing on it and push those rear tires into the ground so they hook up uh, and you don't want, find yourself spinning the car, you know, off your favorite road. Sounds Anthony ridiculous. Anthony seems to think that this is the platform for the car. I just, uh, I don't know yeah, if I can get we, along with that. I mean, clearly it's sold. We, I, I'm impressed that the seller uh, had a realistic expectation. I mean, obviously the, the, the reserve was close enough to make this thing happen uh, at under a hundred thousand dollars. If this were on P car market, you know, this is the kind of, you would expect this car to have a reserve of like 180 grand or something like that. Uh, but I think on BAT, I think you just get more eyeballs on something like this. And I think if it had the livery on it, um, it, you know, if you had somebody like a nine eleven R, um, you know, take the photos and just present it right. I think the car does way better. Uh, I'd sure like, like to see a really cool driving video of this car and i think that uh the person that bought it should hire me to make one whether they're selling the car or not just because i want to come and see this car and drive it uh this thing is badass what do you guys think of the results of this ultima uh i don't even it, it's just an ultima right who made it's just, yeah. uh, just, just an ne- ultima. nissan nissan ultima yeah it's just a nissan ultima right you get it uh for uh two percent down and uh yeah. you know uh spy fi special financing for uh Poor credit, yeah. Just go down to your Datsun dealer. Um, all right, let us know in the comments below. And uh, that was all the cars from the last episode. So we've got a whole batch of new predictions to do right after this. Hey guys, I gotta tell you about our friends God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you gotta call our friend Steve at God and this guy. Save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for, God and Porsche of Las Vegas. If you don't subscribe to Bid Nerds on YouTube right now, I'm gonna shoot this 997. If you said, wait, that's a 996, you're a nerd. So subscribe to the new YouTube channel, BitNerds. Get those nerds! Hey guys, you're probably looking at your watch and wondering if bid nerds will ever end. So you better talk to our friends at Our Smiths to make sure your Rolex, Tag Hauer, AP, or any fine timepiece is in tip-top shape. Our Smiths, fine Swiss repair. Fine Swiss re- repair. <laughs> Sorry, Anthony, I screwed up your uh, slogan there. Fine, Swiss repair. What time is it? Time to get the line right. Jeez, I can't speak. Oh, man. All right. You Our is a, well, you know, it's a good thing that uh, Anthony is better at servicing <laughs> and uh, repairing yeah. fine yeah, Swiss watches than I am yeah. uh, at saying at slogans. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. Jeez, I suck at this. Um, speaking of sucking at this... Um, you know, oh, Hoovy's Garage. You guys watch Hoovy's oh, Garage. You guys know that channel. Cool. I'm not going to talk about this a lot, but uh, we met Tyler Hoovy at the Wynn Concours in Las Vegas right. this year. And I, uh, I approached him and I was like, hey, fan of the show. Total lie, I'm not. I kind of hate it. I absolutely hate his show. Uh, but, uh, you know, we were like, hey, I, you know, I was hoping maybe I could get him on Nerds and be a third nerd. I think he would be a fantastic <laughs> third nerd because he's a guy that knows the market and has known it forever. He is a nerd like us. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I went up to him and I was like, hey, uh, we make this game show on YouTube. I use the word game show specifically. It's like the price is right only with cars on bring a trailer cars and bids P car market and more. Uh, we'd love to have you on as a, as a guest host. Is that something you'd be interested in? He's like, Oh, well I charge $15,000 to mention anyone else's brand on my show. So call my, you know, reach out to us and we'll put you, yeah, whatever. It's like, he basically gave me the blow off, right? Well, he, I'm on YouTube he today. You. He yeah. big leagued you. Yeah, that's big leaguing. Yeah, I'm on uh, 15 grand, right? So I'm on YouTube today, and I notice he, you know, he's got his new show. He ditched, he dumped his wife 
um, you know, the mother of his of his kid, uh, for some blonde bimbo uh, that apparently was on the, the local news or something. So he mm-hmm. he divorces her and then shacks up with the uh, with the side the piece, weather girl with the weather yeah. girl, right? And now he has a <laughs> show on YouTube called like Good Morning YouTube, and the and I swear to God, he calls it. The game show where he has him mm-hmm. and a bunch of his cronies. They get there and what do they do? Little- they play bid nerds. They ripped us off hard. Like it is like a complete and total ripoff. And he calls it a game show. I mean, it's like okay, dude, you are a, uh, Tyler Hoovy. You're a thief, man. I I, I thought mm. you were a nerd and a dork, and I you know I respect you because you built this great YouTube channel and everyone knows who you are and everything like that, but what an a-hole. That is a complete thievery, bro. You suck. Yeah. You suck. So the only way you can what? redeem yourself, Ubi, is to invite Michael Deeb and myself onto your show to play our game. We'll come and play it on yeah. your show. Yeah. I don't we'll, even care we'll if you, you beat us. We'll, we'll do it on your show, and then we'll, you... you Okay, Deep, go ahead, hop in. I was trying we'll, to do my we'll, rant, but no, no, I'll just go over here since Deep, we'll, since apparently Hoovy can do our job better. Go ahead, no, no, go ahead, you got it. You have to go I was just gonna say we could teach them how to play it because they're doing it all wrong. They've got. I like, know, but I wasn't tiny. done with my rant. I would have given you the we'll slot. Get to the meat. Come on, man. All right. Anyways, what do you guys think out there in the nerd herd? Did Hoovy rip us off? You guys need to go over. Oh, I wish man. we had enough of a nerd herd. I wish the herd was big enough to ratio him on YouTube. You guys need to go over in the comments of that show and go, you guys ripped off the bid nerds. And the if you're watching nerds. this yeah. show, you should go watch the actual bid nerds. Can you guys believe Hoovy did that to us? What's up, oh, Tyler man. Hoovy? Come on, man. I'm calling you out. Maybe it was just an oversight. Maybe it was just he was having so much fun that he, you know, it's like, you know how liars, they they lie so much that they kind of don't even know they're lying anymore. Maybe he's just one of those guys. He's just pathological. and doesn't even realize that he stole that thing from us. But that's all right. We're better than him. Uh, And also what we have that he doesn't is we have the nerd herd. And the nerd herd is what makes this show. Uh, So thank you guys for hanging out with us. We've got new predictions coming up right now. Michael what's the first car on our list all right jp so awesome buddy of mine friend of the show and member of the nerd herd yuri sanakis has a best friend in this world and uh that guy is selling his 1972 volkswagen type 3 squareback and i believe with all anonymity he is in the nerd herd tonight as 72 squareback so um he's here to support all claims made against him and his car uh but this is a car that uh, listen i heard the story i've known this guy for years he is a really wonderful person in the car community in san francisco um and then um uh whatchamacallit he knows a lot of people in the car world in the bay area and somebody tipped him off about a car a volkswagen that was in a barn up in the wine country so um i think photographs and video from them pulling the car out are included in the listing on bring a trailer um but he pulled this car out and just went to work on it making it something really cool put some fuchs on it jp um got the motor rebuilt some put some big old carburetors on it uh got the gearbox all sorted out took the bumpers off of this thing and waxed it and what you see here is this really cool largely original but gently modified to give it some you know some curb appeal uh type three square back um and the thing sounds great it rips it's you know 2.1 leader with big carbs on it and uh and like i said the, the 15 inch fuchs give it a look and a stance this thing is is awesome so he's driven the car you know over the last year and and like he drives it works on it drives it works on it and now it's time to sell so i promised we'd give them some bid nerds love and take a look at it i know you're a volkswagen buddy uh fan uh, when I was a kid growing up, my mom had a 67 Beetle. So when I was a child, I used to stand on the seat next to my mother uh, in the early 70s. Um, and listening to this car, the way those old air-cooled VWs run, uh, is very nostalgic for me. Um, the Type 3s, JP, by all accounts, came in notchback, fastback, and squareback. I do believe, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, the squarebacks are maybe the least um, valuable of the three styles. Uh, but I would also contest that the cars are so rare that it almost doesn't matter. We just don't see them to market often enough. Uh, they weren't nearly as popular as the Beetle, even though I think this car 
um, despite being a two door with its its hatchback, it's like a mini wagon, like a mini clubman, um, and I think it's very utilitarian, uh, arguably way ahead of its time. Um, anyway, I think my buddy got this car just right, um, and I think he's going to do pretty well on here. It's definitely on the right platform, and they got some decent photos. Uh, I hope it does really, really well. So JP, Yuri's friend who you've met and know, uh, is selling his Type 3 Squareback. It's running at no reserve, which we commend him for that. I think that's the right way to do it. Um, it, it it's it's going to guarantee, obviously, that it sells, but it's also going to guarantee that all the underbidders remain engaged until the hammer falls because they know the next bid will win. Um, so there you go, John. What do you like about what you see here? Is there anything you don't like or think maybe we could have done a little differently uh, to improve upon this listing? Um, and then have you ever owned – like? As much as I know you love uh, Corrados and Scirocco's and GTIs, I don't remember you ever telling me you owned a Ghia or a Beetle or it wouldn't shock me if you owned a Squareback at one point. What do you, talk to me. What do you got? Any air-cooled VW love? Yeah, I owned I owned a Beetle once. Um, I've never mm -hmm. owned an air-cooled Volkswagen other than that Beetle. I think it was a 74, and of course it was Cabrio or something like that. But, uh, you know, yeah. this I, I love this thing. I think this these I've always loved these, always had a thing for them, never actually gone out and bought one. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't say that. I, I also had a Volkswagen thing uh, for a very long time. And oh, loved, yeah. You know, that, that, that was the greatest air-cooled car of all time. Um, but this would be a fantastic car to well, look i i'm not going to get into this car because i think everybody kind of knows what this is what i love about this listing what i love uh what the seller has done is that they're totally honest with this one um you know there's there's video of it being pulled out of the barn how cool is that yep. um the pictures right. are uh showing the information there is no effort in this listing to cover anything up. Um, this car is being shown in the reality of everything that you're getting into. You know, they, what I think a lot of people do when they get stuff like this is they go and get it detailed. Uh, and then they go and take a bunch of, you know, fancy <gasps> pictures with, you know, cool lighting and a fancy spot or whatever and try to make it look like something that it's not. And I think what the seller did here is they did just a couple, they, they got it running. Uh, they put some cool wheels on it so you could drive it down the road as it is. But, you know, uh, if, if anybody that really gets into this is going to want to put their own touch to this car. These cars mm -hmm. absolutely need to be modded. Uh, Anthony from our Smith's mentioned that it, you know, needs a couple of surfboards on the roof. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, that would be totally. awesome. Right. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I don't think that would be right for the listing. Like that would be my inclination, no. uh, you know, to, if you were finishing this car, but like, look at this photo, this is, Isn't of, that great? this is of the logo that's twisted, but it's not, I'm not showing this photo because of what's been done with the logo, right? that it's got the Swissy logo. What you see here is that there's the dirt and grime behind the logo. If this thing were detailed, all that would be gone, right? So that would indicate that they're, okay, the cars were detailed and they're covering stuff up. This is just showing, hey, look, we pulled it out of the barn, we wash it, that's it. We put wheels on it, it runs. Now you do your, you do you, bro. You buy this car and make it the way you want it. And, uh, you know, Express yourself. That's what this car is for. It's not going to go for a ton of money. These never do. Um, the people that that are into old Volkswagens, you know, our good friend Chef, he sold his Carmen Ghia on BAT last summer. Uh, and yeah. because of the photos well. that I took and the video, uh, you know, it was it broke a record. It sold for twice as much <laughs> as one has ever sold. And, okay, I'll be honest, it wasn't my photos. And, I mean... That helped for sure, uh, but oh uh, but you know the car was was not just your run of the mill Carmen Ghia. It was a show car in every sense of the word, right? Um, people that like these cars don't have a whole lot of money. You go to a Volkswagen show, they all spend their money yeah. on weed and vape and all that kind of stuff. They're not, they, so <laughs> you know this is the perfect car for that scene. New pair but of they vans. don't. Uh, yeah, they they got to <laughs> keep a couple of bucks on the side for strawberry shortcake. You know, uh, steam. So yeah. what do we think this car is going to bring? Uh, we're getting some JP? bids in. Anthony thinks sixteen and a half. Uh, Sergeant you, Tom says seventy five hundred. Uh, Yuri says fifteen and a half. All right, what do you want to do? I was wondering, could you show us just like a minute of the driving video? Yeah, I can get to that, but you got to talk about something. Okay, cool. All right, cool. So the current bid right now is $7,500. The car is running at no reserve, and it closes on Bring a Trailer tomorrow. And uh, uh, just on five bids, it's up to $7,500. Now, again, 
if this were a, a square back or a notch back, I would say, you know, somewhere in the, the vast spread of twenty to thirty thousand dollars would be in play. Uh, but I think because it's a square back, um, this, despite being hit high and hit far, is still going to stay in the park. So you got a little volume for that? Can we hear it? Uh, I can, but I didn't want it to be above you. Yeah, it just sounds really good. Thanks, JP. I just wanted people to hear it. I, I think, it, you know, that car hums with the, the carbs on the exhaust. So, uh, again, at 7,500, closes tomorrow. JP, um, I put my bid in early, and I'm going to stand on it pretty close to Yuri's. I'm going to go $15,000. And, of course, at no reserve, it'll sell for that, um, which is essentially twice what it's sitting at right now. I think it's going to make 100% more money tomorrow before the hammer falls. Where are you at? Well, uh, Anthony's hopping in at, uh, what did he say? He says it's a solid survivor, so it should do well. It's cool, unlike the MR2 last week, and that brought 19 grand. Uh, that may be true. I don't necessarily agree with you on that one, um, Anthony, but the thing is about this car is that uh, the people like him don't have any money. Uh, people that, ha you know, because, look, the cars that drive classic markets are always the cars that people wanted when they were teenagers. All right. The people that were teenagers when this car, uh, was new, they're already retiring. Those are the boomers. They're out of money. They need to retire. They need to pay for old folks homes. They need to pay for the polo shirts that they're buying at the PCA club. They're not into air cooled cars anymore unless they are broke. Uh, if they're broke, then they want something like this. And, uh, they're just not going to, this isn't going to be like a GTI that could bring 50 to $80,000. These cars, uh, just they're going to top out. Um, uh, your number was what? 15 grand? 15. And Anthony, who you're talking about, was at 16.5. Yep. He looks like he's the high man in the room at the moment. Sold to Anthony. I think he should buy this car, actually. I think he'd look good. I think he this should buy this good, car. This Absolutely. Car. You know, it's got those Plus, cool, it's got that dashboard with all the cool gauges on it, actually. Um, that yeah, would look pretty dope. Very. Um, yeah, what was, I think what was your number, uh, Yeah, I don't get a number yet. Uh, I think it's going to get over 10, um, but not much. I'm going to go uh, 12 and a half, 12, five. Uh, you know, I'm hoping for the seller because we are friends with the seller. Uh, we're hoping that he gets way more than that. Um, I hope it yeah. goes to the moon, but my pragmatic self says the market, the, the people that want these just don't have a whole heck of a lot of money. Uh, and so that shows. So you're, there it is. Yeah. So Carbine's at twelve five. Ross Churchout is at eleven oh, five. Yeah. Ra Racer Nerd is at twelve seven five. Um, and uh, Michael S is at thirteen thousand. Uh, Randy B is at fourteen nine. So you're, you, you know, you're kind of in the middle of the pack with the rest of the herd. Um, I'm up at the leading edge, but I, I think the Fuchs and the Stance, and I think the driving video are going to help drive the the price into our territory. Um, and listen, I, I. I, I remember when this guy, I talked to him like the day after he pulled the car out of the barn um, and how excited he was about it. And, uh, and I, you know, I think he's going to do well. I, I think he's really excited. Um, and then, you know, he's going to pour the money into another project that we'll eventually get to cover. So there you go. Good luck to everyone involved. Yep. Definitely rooting for the seller on this one. Great guy, great seller. If you are considering this car, know that it's coming from a fantastic seller. So uh, good luck. What do you guys think this thing will bring? Let us know in the comments below. And uh, let's move on to the next car. What do we got? All right, JP. Chef, our good friend, Chef. What's going on, Chef? Thank you again. Uh, Chef picked for us a 1973 Porsche 911 T Coupe that has a twin plug 3.6 power plant. This car is located in Sherwood, Oregon and is on Bring a Trailer. The car, um, the current owner of the car in 97 and has since been modified by Jerry Woods Enterprises of Campbell, California. So I don't know much about the Porsche engine builders in this country, but I can tell you that I'm not living under a rock either. I've heard of and know all about Ed Pink, who makes all the Singer motors. Um, and then I've heard of Jerry Woods, um, who is, uh, you know, being a California guy, somebody here in the Bay Area, I've heard people talk about this guy's name for, for days and days. I don't know that you and I have necessarily covered a car that he was affiliated with, um, but this car apparently was uh, one of his babies and, and did everything, including repainting the car in Gulf Blue and um, added on the fender flares and then the fiberglass ducktail, the RS bumpers, 
And then, of course, he built this incredible twin plug 3.6 liter that was a 964 derived block, which I think is the superior block over the 993. If I've learned everything from what I've overheard, um, the car has um, individual throttle bodies and a Motec engine man management system. It all runs through a 915 gearbox with a Wevo shifter with custom ratios, and it has a ZF limited slip differential. Um, so the parts on this car are great. Time and time again, JP, we talk about this sort of imaginary, um, you know, plateau with builds that if the build was built by somebody who has a reputation that you can expect the car to bring over, I think that number is around $200,000. I can't remember where we left it. Uh, but oftentimes you can have all the best equipment in the, in the world, but if nobody knows the person who made it, in other words, if it's not like a, a um, celebrity chef that, that, that made the stew, um, then nobody's going to pay you the money for it in the secondary market. In other words, the guy who built it is going to lose money selling it. Whereas if you're the one that that sprung for paying for a singer, uh, the singer's reputation will carry the weight of the car and it'll bring more money in the um, in the secondary market. So so we're putting essentially um, Jerry Woods and his reputation to the test because it's his DNA all over this particular car. Um, so John. I like what I see here. I think the wheels and the colorway and the interior and the um, and the uh, the rear window with the you know it's got like the plexiglass with the the support bars. Um, this car has got all the look and all the stance you would ever hope. Um, there is, uh, I don't know if you took a look at the driving videos, JP. There are these are, and and look, I don't, you know you do enough criticizing that I don't feel like I have to criticize people very often, but these are the worst driving videos I have ever seen in my entire life. And they, he did two of them and they're both equally bad for the same reason, but they're different executions of the same bad video. He's got glare coming in and a bad lens or something. You cannot see the road in his driving video. It's absolutely insane. It looks like the CIA, um, you know, uh, censored the video in a way that you can't tell that it was censored, you know, like, like it's just, it's really bizarre. <laughs> but anyway, I like the car. I know of the guy, but I, the question is, does everybody else outside of California know this guy that it will carry this price beyond $200,000? Because John, you and I can look at this and see that there's more than 200 grand under the hood of this thing. So I send it back to you, chef. Thank you for picking the car. JP, what do you think of what you see here? Have you heard of Jerry Woods and do you think this car is going to carry, you know, is his name going to carry the day or is this guy just going to, you know, peter out at 150 and then it's going to wind up as a no-sale? Hey, look at that, a, sh a carbon fiber shift knob. Ah, oh, this is indicative of the car having been owned by someone who's not an enthusiast. It's probably a piece of junk. Okay, that was a dig at you, Anthony. Uh, look, this yeah. car, yeah. yeah, obviously. Don't bite the hand that feeds us, yeah. John. <laughs> uh, I gotta love the car. It is absolutely gorgeous and it has all the right bits and everything like that. But it's it, it's got some weird details. Uh, maybe I'll get to those in a second. But um, I'm with you deep. The presentation on this car absolutely sucks you know these photos are overexposed this is not what i mean it's like i get that they're trying to do the okay it's the white background you know look it's not an iphone guys you don't need that completely you know uh blown out background um we want to see photos that make the car look good but we also want to be able to see the details and because it's overexposed it's like it's not until you start getting into the really close up photos that you start seeing the rock chips and the dings and stuff like that, which are okay. Um, because this is, you know, like we see a lot of these cars that look like this, a lot of builds they're built on an SC or they're built on a, you know, Carrera, uh, a G body car and they're backdated. This is an actual 73 car. See this picture isn't overexposed and you can start to see the rock chips on the hood and stuff like that. Whereas you go back to the photo from before, um, sorry guys, the, uh, photo thing, I was trying to do a little, uh, learning moment here. Um, so, you know, there's the hood overexposed and it isn't until they actually expose it correctly that you start to see, uh, you know, the blemishes of honesty. this car. Yeah. Now, yeah. you know, this is definitely, this car is definitely not being shown as honestly as the square back was. Uh, although his driving video sucked too. By the way, what the heck, man? 240p? Are you kidding? Did you shoot that on a on a flip phone or something? Um, I'm going to try to get to the interior photos on this car because there's some weird choices on the interior. I obviously noticed or I noted that silly um, 
carbon fiber shift knob, which I don't think is right, but whatever. It's that's again, that's a super easy thing to uh, to change. But some weird choices on the interior of this car. The Recaro pole position seats are absolutely fantastic. They have the what is that Pepita in? Or is that Pepita? What is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. But they went with velour. On the black, why the hell didn't they spring for the leather? This is a two hundred thousand dollar build plus, right? But they chinsed out and went with the the cloth when everything else inside is leather. That just doesn't make any sense at all. There's some photos of this car from the past where it has the period correct race seats. And, you know what happened to those? Why didn't they get a new version of those, or maybe you get some you know classic GTS looking seats, something that's a little bit more period correct? I absolutely love pole positions and I don't really have a problem with the velour generally um, on a car that maybe isn't quite as uh, you know presenting as expensive as this one is but that's just like a crazy cheap out to me I do not get how it's just again it's one of those kind of weird unforced errors that I just don't understand what sellers are thinking sometimes Um, this car is fantastic looking at I was looking through this ad earlier uh, looking at some of the receipts for the for the you know maintenance and stuff there's a lot of old receipts but it's interesting it's like how much of the work was done recently versus a long time ago Uh, you really got to dig into listings like this to to know what you're actually getting Uh, there's some articles from old magazines back in the 2000s uh, early 2000s, like 2001, 2005. So, you know, this paint, you know, was painted by, okay, great. You know, I'm sorry, I forgot the guy's name. Uh, you know, but it was, but it was a long time ago. And why isn't there a clock? Why didn't they put a MIG clock in there? Why didn't they call our Smiths and get a cool, you know, aviation clock in there or something like that? Come on guys. Don't they ever watch the bid nerds and know where to get the get the stuff. Um, I love the car, but I don't love it enough to think that this car is going to go over the top. I think it's going to sputter out. Um, what do you think this thing will sell for? What's, uh, what's the nerd herd say? So, uh, let's see, do we have numbers yet? So we've got uh, 190,000 reserve, not met by Michael S. I think that's a really good bid. Anthony Vera is uh, a lot more bearish on this one. So he said failed to sell at 140. Randy B 142, 911. I think the car will do a little better than that. Let me first start by saying, JP, I got ahead of myself. Please understand there's there's medicine in this. I, I um, <laughs> confused the driving videos of the, of the next car, the MR2, with the video that's on this car. The video on this car is actually fine, and you can hear the motor, which sounds amazing. And, uh, John, speaking of the motor, you often say that the motor drives the value in the build and this one has a gem of a motor and despite even if i agreed with every one of your takes about um you know you know this detail and that detail the bottom line is a build like this is already modified which kind of gives the new owner permission to do whatever he wants because it's no longer an original car so even though I might agree with you on some of those details. I still see the car as a blank canvas and the most expensive piece is already done. Somebody found the car, somebody already built the motor. So those things don't bother me. And I don't think those are the things that are going to hold back the value. What I think will hold back the value is if nobody else in the world knows who Jerry Woods is. Um, So with that in mind, I do agree with you that this one will stay in the park. I don't think it's going to find 200000 um, but I don't think it's going to peter out at the 140s like a few of the members of the herd say. I'm going to give you $185,000, JP, where I think the seller will have a hard choice to make about letting this car go. <coughs> because one hundred eighty-five dollars might be excuse me, all this car can bring uh, if nobody knows who Jerry Woods is. So we'll we'll find all that out here in the next couple of days. Um, I should add, John, because uh, forgive me, I'm getting way ahead of myself. It is currently at $105,000 on 25 bids. So a lot of action to get to that number. And it does close tomorrow. So we're in the final, you know, we're, we're a little more than 12 hours away from closing this thing. So JP, my bid is 185 where I think the car could transact at that number. I send that to you. What's your bid? Yeah, if it makes it that high and the seller doesn't take that money, um, he's an idiot. This car is a fantastic car, but the everything about it is just a little off. Um, I love the engine. I love the build. I, I would love to own this car, but I wouldn't pay a premium for it. Um, you know, we've seen nicer cars <laughs> with recent builds, with brand new paint, with all the things that was done, you know, 
yesterday. Um, yeah. You know, not bring that much money. And, uh, you know, so at, at a, if you're up in the, anything over a buck 50, the guy should probably take it unless he's going to keep it for a very long time. It's going to be hard for him to get that much money unless the market really turns around. I think that cars like this, hot rods, um, have not taken a dump. There's no crash when it comes to the value of hot rods. Uh, but I think we're definitely in soft landing territory. Um, you're I, you're absolutely right. Engine cell cars. If this car had the factory, if it's your the stock in, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If if the yeah. if it had the Some, factory right. engine, yeah. right. <laughs> if it had the engine it came with, uh, you know, I, I think. Well, I mean, it's a seventy three. This is something I'd love to talk to you, you know, our friend Dwayne Wick about, um, you know, because again, this is a long, this is an actual long hood car. This isn't a uh, backdate car. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go 156, 911 and say it doesn't sell um, and hope for the seller that he gets more for it. Because, yeah, the, the, the builder, although known, is not known well enough. He's not a contemporary builder that everyone's well, going gaga over. All right. I got something for you, JP. So, um, so first of all, to, if the original motor is in it, it's going to be a 2.4. And you could build that up to be like a 2.8. So you're looking at, you know, an easy 250 horsepower on pump gas. This 3.6 offers you 100 horsepower more than that easily. Um, and so the performance is really in a, in a totally different stratosphere. So I get why they they did the block. Yeah, um, but hold on. One but of, that, but, the, but yeah. the, this is a 73 with the original motor is going to be worth way more than a hopped up motor. It's just, I mean, it's not a it's not an original car at this point. If it had a numbers matching right. engine, even if the numbers matching engine was bored out and built and da, 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 and had all the cool stuff on it, it would still be worth more than a, a far better. I agree that the engine that's in it is way better, but it's not the original and it's a long hood. If this were an 86 back date, um, and it had the original engine that wouldn't do anything, right? Who cares about a three, two yeah. original engine, but a three, six built. Yeah. That's going to bring more money. This badass engine, I think is actually going to hurt the value of this car. Uh, and I think so, that's the struggle on this thing. So now we're going to get into semantics cause we're nerds and this is mm -hmm. what we do here. I would say you were correct. If it was an E or an S that had MFI, oh, but for as sure. a T, if, but a T with a CIS, um, I don't. I I actually think this car will bring more money than if it were just a standard seventy three matching numbers T. Okay. Okay. But, hold on. You know, hold on. Yeah, yeah. You know what I said was the original engine, even if it were modified. If you uh, had taken okay. the, if you had the original two point four, and you put. You know, the same, you know, st you put ITBs and you put engine management and fuel yeah. system and, and you bored it out and you did all the cool stuff to get more power out of it. Um, that's yep. what you do with a hot rod when you're talking about a long hood. And this goes back to the video that I mentioned before the break that we just published under fascination, uh, the ethics of modification, right? Uh, you know, Kevin yeah. talks about this. It's like a flow chart. If this, then this, if this, then this, you know, there are definitely, again, I'll say it again. If it's your car and you want to modify it, do whatever the heck you want. I'm all for it. I love modding cars. Make it the way you want it. But when it comes to selling it, when it comes to bringing it back on the market, the things that people look at are originality. Uh, the original engine would bring more money even if it was, you know, if it was built up. Now, if it were just the original engine with just a CIS and it was a tired old engine, then of course not. Um, but you know, this isn't an original car. This is definitely a hot rod. Uh, and I think yeah. it's going to get some, it's going to get, it's obviously getting attention. Um, it looks like a great driving car. This looks like the great. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is the car you want to take on a Texas Hill country Absolutely. rally or, or whatever. Um, so <laughs> yeah, this thing yeah. will rip. All right. Well, we got right. lots of um, opinions on other, that one. Yeah. Uh, Chris Carbine came in at 155. Michael Myers, Buddha. What's up, Buddha? 190,000. Tom W said it'll sell at 185. Um, and then Dave Yu, uh, I'm not sure I know who Dave Yu is, but he says JWE, which would be Jerry Woods Enterprises, is on Google. So they exist. People know them. They've, they're, <laughs> they're popular. Um, and then uh, Ben says 160 plus, but reserve not met. It's overexposed. He agrees with you, JP, on the yeah. photos. So there you go. Uh, that's yeah. all the comments It's a poor presentation that just hurts. If the presentation, yeah. like, again, I'll say it again. I just say, I hate saying it, but 911R would present this car in a way that might get your buck 80. But this car makes, this presentation 
Although I'm not going to say, I, like, I do not think for one second that the seller is deliberately trying to cover anything up. I think they're just no, doing no, a no. poor job at, at yeah. I think they think yeah. they're doing a great job, but they've really kind of dropped the ball on this. And uh, it'll be interesting to it's, see what the results are uh, tomorrow when this thing closes. The, the video and photography are of JV, junior varsity uh, quality. Yeah, not JP to be for those that are just listening. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the nerd her Dave you. All right. What do you guys think of this hot rod? Uh, let us know in the comments below. And we got one more car. What do we got? Michael Deeb. This is a, you. You right, screwed up the You teased this one on accident. I think I did. And, and I I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give that one to your day quill. Uh, normally Please. I'd be jumping yeah, in your ish totally. for that. Oh man. I'm so, I ran out of NyQuil. I ran out of NyQuil. So I just had a DayQuil and I'm so scared. This is going to keep me up all night because I'm very Aeroflu. sensitive to artificial stimulants. Yeah, totally. So John picked for us a 1991 No, actually Toyota Sahan F picked this one actually for the record. Oh, he did. Oh, we didn't put his name in the thing. Um, we'll have to talk to the guy whoever uh, loaded that up to not put mm -hmm. the name in. That's mm -hmm. a big mm -hmm. error. Mm -hmm. So let me just write that. We'll just stop the show while I fix your mistake. No, I'm just kidding. So JP... <laughs> Um, Sahan picked for us this 1991 Toyota MR2 Turbo with a five-speed manual transmission. Our car is running no reserve on Bring a Trailer out of Alameda, California. I wonder if Sahan knows the guy. That's that's just over the hill and through a tunnel. Um, our car is showing 76,000 original miles. The window sticker is included, which is kind of interesting. Uh, JP, did you know that these cars were only $24,000 when they were brand new <laughs> 30 years ago? Um, Here's the thing. It's low miles. It's got the T-tops. It's a stick shift, and it's the turbo with 200 horsepower. I, I like this car. Um, the way that you sort of die on that hill for the earlier uh, variants of the MR2 and the later MR2 Spider, this is the one that I like, the turbo of this generation, the, uh, what do they call it, the SW20 or something? Yeah, SW20 MR2. Hold on, hold on. I know I'm at a turn. But that's gaslighting, yeah. folks, and I'm not going to let you get away with it. I don't care how much Dayquil you're on. That was gaslighting people. Did you see what he just did yes. there? That is like, what do you work yes. for CNN? Oh, you yeah. like the other one, and you like this other one. Uh, so yeah. let, you, it must be a binary worldview where this, <laughs> where you like those better than this one. No, you do. I don't. I. That's why. I. That's why this one is here. But anyways, please uh, continue your gaslighting. Uh, I, you sicko. I must, have, I must have overheard you wrong then. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, this car was uh, delivered to Ventura Toyota down in Ventura, California. John, as closer inspection of the photographs leads me to believe that this car has not had an easy seventy-five thousand miles. The lower front clip and the front hood. Uh, represent two different shades of yellow to my eye. And uh, if you look at a picture of the back, uh, the rear deck lid, um, that also has been bent and does not line up well with the right rear quarter panel. Um, so to me, this car has been dinged in the front and dinged in the rear. Um, and this is not a car I would pursue despite being, um, you know, we don't see them in, in, in a, like an original non-modified condition very often. We don't see them very often uh, and when we do, we don't see them with under 100,000 miles. Um, so this car ticks a lot of boxes, but not enough boxes to get my money. So uh, I appreciate Sahan bringing yet another MR2 for you to uh, fawn all over. This is one I do like, but I don't like this particular example. I would steer clear of this one. The yellow and the cloth interior, I'm down. I totally dig it. Uh, but this one, I think, has just been banged up a bit, JP, and I would probably steer clear of it. It's running no reserve. It's going to sell here. Um, but I think this one's had it rough. I think this one spent some time. Those Some of those close-ups you were showing us uh, show a lot of surface rust. I bet this car has been parked on the street for years. Uh, and it just, yeah, I would um, I would sidestep this one and wait for a better one to come along. Uh, I'd rather pay more for a better quality version of this car. So, JP, what do you like about this particular generation of the MR2 as you are a fan of the Toyota Sport Car? I mean, this particular generation is the best of the three for sure. Uh, I do like the original supercharged one. I think that's kind of the most 80s of the cars. Uh, but this version of the car is definitely the best version. It has the most power, is the best looking. Um, these were like 
impossible to insure back in the 90s. People were wrapping these around trees left and right. It was this car and the 300ZX that just rocked Ferrari's world. Um, you know, they had their contemporary car <laughs> mid-engine was the 348, and this little thing with 100 fewer horsepower would have given it a run for its money. Um, it's just, I was super excited when I saw... Uh, this one, I, when I saw the link uh, and read the description, but then looking at the photos, it really is a big old letdown. Um, this car is unfortunately just a used car and is representative of what most of these are these but days. Go, go back to yeah, photos. Yeah, I know the back. The, I, I showed yeah. the back. The the back. Uh, the back hood is un, is all messed up. No, we got it. We got it. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this car has so many things that are that are you know not right about it. it you know, there's the plastics are shrinking and stuff is bent. And I don't think this car has never necessarily been in a big accident, but it's had bumps and bruises and scrapes and scratches, uh, you know, and to that end, I guess it's being represented, uh, you know, honestly, so you can give them that. Uh, but, uh, but this car, it's, it's one of those cars where I don't know, we haven't seen a super clean one. Um, come around right so that that first gen one we know brought like twenty thousand bucks almost twenty thousand bucks um and that car was definitely in nicer condition than this car uh but the second gen ones are definitely in higher demand because they're just the better looking and better performing car um so the question is is something like this worth trying to save and i just don't know how you would do it it's got so much body work so many dings and bumps and bruises um, that it's just, it would just take so much to get this car right. The interior is pretty darn nice. Other than the shift boot, um, the seats are actually nice. And, and that's tough to main, you know, those, those, the cloth seats are usually totally roached out, but somehow yeah, they're they okay. Nice. Uh, the dash looks like it's pretty much all right, but you've got basically the armrest and the shift knob. Well, that's easy enough to, to probably repair. Um, so you're really just kind of like left with exterior issues and you guys know my, uh, three point criteria for buying a classic car. It's you've got the price, you've got the, um, you've got the mechanical condition and you've got the aesthetics. Um, this car, uh, being low miles, being that it's an MR2 and a Toyota, like one thing that's in this, in this listing is a bunch of the, uh, repair bills. And it's just like, I was laughing my ass off. Like the guy, the seller of this car, um, found an oil leak. So he takes it to the dealership and you know, they, they diagnose it. They, they let it run for hours. They, they clean the bottom of the car. They let it run for hours. They find that it needs a, uh, what is it? The, yeah, the oil pan gasket or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole thing, diagnosis, repair, everything was like 350 bucks, right? If that were a 911, it would be $3,500, right? Yeah. Every, it just added zero. So the cost of ownership of something like this is so hilariously low uh, that it just represents a great bang for the buck. Um, is this a car? Uh, so, you know, mechanically, you're good. Uh, aesthetically, You've got a bunch of body work. You'd probably have to go as far as repainting it. And repainting cars these days is really, really expensive. So the last criteria is that whole price. Can this car be bought at a low enough price to make it worthwhile to go ahead and fix all that aesthetic stuff uh, and then have a really good car? Uh, let's get to numbers. What do we think this thing will bring? So the answer to that rhetorical question, JP, is no. I think the only person that could afford to do the body work and paint on this is if the guy who buys it owns a body paint, body shop and yeah. he could do it himself uh, because if you're paying um, a retail number to get that work done, this car just won't pencil. And and that's kind of a bummer, you know, because yeah. like I said, there's just not enough of them left on the road and it was a good car in period. It's a shame that not enough people took good care of these that we'd see them more common. Like even if you took this car to Radwood, it would be the only one there, you know? So yeah. um, neat little car, JP. I can tell you this. The average selling price for an MR2 Turbo of this generation is um, right around, let me read it to you, uh, $22,600, $695. So $22,700 really uh, is the average price. But I'm going to take about five or six grand off of that number. John, our car is sitting at $11,750 with two days left until it closes on Bring a Trailer. And it is running at no re reserve, which will help. Uh, but not a lot. I don't think this car will see twenty grand. My number is going to be seventeen five 
or about $5,000 off what the average one of these is selling for because it needs about $5,000 worth of bodywork and paint. So JP, I send it back to you at 17.5. Do you like it more than I do? Yeah, probably because I look, you know, you read off the average, the, the average price value, whatever, 20 grand or something like that. Yeah. None of these are any good. They're all garbage. So the fact that it's, uh, you know, that, that spread, the has got to be really wide because some of these are probably only going for five or six, seven thousand uh, $7,000. And then, I mean, we've just never seen a really nice one. I mean, when was the last time anybody saw a really nice one? Uh, Chris Carbine says there's a nice one over on cars and bids. I'll have to go check that one out. I thought I saw, I thought I saw, but I thought it was an automatic or something, or maybe it was a first gen. I can't remember, but uh, I'll go back and check it out. Um, yeah. So your, your number is 17, which is much higher than I thought you would go. Um, 17, five. Well, it's, at, yeah. it's already at almost 12 and it's got two days left. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm going to go know. ahead and I'll look, I'll give it 20 grand. Uh, do I think it's going to get you much do. higher? Than that? Yeah. Really? Because look, it's a, it is a turbo. It is a Mark II. Um, this car, yeah, five, six, seven thousand dollars cleans it up, and you've got a great car for under thirty thousand dollars. I'd way rather have this than any RX7. I'll say it out loud. I mean, there it is. Um, you know, I even the FDs are as fantastic as they are. They break all the time. You know, you're going to be constant. Like we talked about the that little one. Uh, you know, from the last episode. Um, they're really is an RX7 a cooler car than this? Yes, absolutely, especially an FD. Um, but uh, to drive, I mean, you're not, I wouldn't even trust an FD to go to an LA car show <laughs> from Las Vegas. I'd be worried that it wouldn't make it. And then once it blows up, I don't know who the hell I would take it to. Whereas with an MR2 got, turbo, you could take it to anyone. Uh, you could take it to Jiffy Lube for crying out loud. I got a, would you rather, okay. so for your $20,000, would you rather have this MR2 or even $25,000 and this MR2 being a nicer, not needing the battery work and paint? Or would you take a Nissan 300ZX without the turbos, but has a manual five-speed? I think I would take the 300Z, despite uh, maybe not being as quick uh, uh, and a straight a line base, Yeah, no, there's no way I would take the 300 over a mid-engine uh, you know, <laughs> turbo. Uh, uh, no, I mean, that's just crazy talk. Uh, maybe a turbo right. 300Z. Uh, no, you to couldn't get one for the same money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it it's like the money yeah. wouldn't be the same. And, but yeah. don't get me wrong, I I think that is a good comparo though. Um, I I just think yeah. that the the like if you could actually find a really nice second gen, um, MR2 manual turbo with the T tops and like, I, and I don't really like the yellow. Uh, if you had a black one or a green one or a white one or whatever, almost any other, even a red one. Uh, I just hate this canary yellow. If it were like more of a speed yellow or something like that. Okay. But this faded kind of uh, Tweety bird thing just doesn't do it for me. Um, it's but a, uh, it's what's signal that? yellow, bro. It's no, signal, signal yellow, bro. bro. <laughs> it's not bro. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments hey. below. Would you rather have an MR2 turbo or a naturally acid 300 ZX? What are we going to throw in there deep? uh let's see um ben in the comments jp can you look over and see this ben says how about you chris carbine you nerds need to come to new allen's a just a day show from our garage at la chicane or at least patch us in from our pit stop lounge uh so i don't know what ben reach out to jp in the um you know on Instagram or, or whatever. And, uh, and tell us what you're talking about. And if we can patch into something, uh, you have our attention. So there yeah, you go. I'm, I'm not seeing that comment yet. Maybe it's, uh, it might be on the actual feed, but it's not on my, I'm, uh, yeah. my interface I'm, on the user. Yeah. I'm reading it on the actual feed. I, I run it live on delay just behind us. So I can okay. keep up with the comments. Yeah. Hit us up so with ben, that. Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, Ben, uh, hit me up, DM me on Instagram on the bid nerds channel. And, uh, we'll there talk you. about that more. And, figure out what we can do there um all right guys all right, yeah who do we have on sunday what's his name again ray shefka ray shefska shefka yeah. shefska i think it's shefska uh from car edge and the ray and zach show uh check those guys out daily on the ray and zach show i think they're on in the morning like nine o'clock in the morning so maybe we can get them to do a shout out and let them know that uh let everybody know that they're they're gonna be right. or he's gonna be joining us uh the father from the father and son team is gonna be joining us uh, on the sunday episode and then the following wednesday i well i'm not gonna promise anybody on the following wednesday but we do have uh brad from id deal uh coming, coming. soon uh we also have um bet with aj is going to be coming on soon uh so we've got some hitters coming on it's going to be a lot of fun uh so keep watching uh yeah hop in 
Uh, I've got a couple more things. Uh, one, uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, I think I heard this word. So mm. um, thank you, Hoovy. Uh, Rochelle mm-hmm. should do a new Bid Nerds logo where it's say Bid Nerds established in 2020, just to just like lay down the <laughs> right. gauntlet, let them know. We've, we've been around for four years. I just said I think that's relevant I, now. I, I'm going to vi- I'm gonna just do a standalone video where I <laughs> tell the story and I'm going to show Hoovy's channel and be like, look, we met him here on this date and then... <laughs> Four weeks later, he has a game show. Like a cold case episode. That completely like rips us off. Yeah. Hoovy, you yeah. are a lying, dirty, dirty cheater. You need to redeem yeah. yourself and get the nerds Invite on your on. show. Yeah, Invite us sure. on. And, uh, we'll play. And, and we'll play for bragging rights, man. That's right. Let's let's, let's fix this. Let's make it okay. <laughs> I am oak. I, I want to bury the hatchet. I, w- I don't want there to be bad juju between us and Hoovy. Uh, but right yeah. now, there is, bro. You oh, are a thief in my bastard. book. And I think you, you need bastard. to defend yourself. Um, <laughs> and uh, he doesn't need to because everyone watches his show uh and know. hardly anyone one, watches ours 1. but it's okay 5. yeah 1.5 mil million yeah. i think oh, we yeah, got yeah. 1.5 thousand but uh that's okay yeah. we just need a few zeros to catch up and the nerd herd yeah. is helping us do it by hitting hey. that thumbs up and sharing so, the show so jp in this theoretical uh resolution to this feud that we're in now we've got a row the right? feud that um, we're in that yeah. but he doesn't know he's Hoover in doesn't a feud know yet. yeah exactly yeah <laughs> um uh, we're in a fight so I'm picturing this thing where we do a bid nerds, but we get a lifeline and we've got the nerd herd. So who in the nerd herd are we calling for a bid? Is it going to be Gerd? Is it going to be Anthony? Like who do, who's our go-to if we get a lifeline for a, you know, a bragging rights winning bid on a car. So let's uh, argue amongst yourselves. Who's going to be the, um, or, or do we just average out the nerd herd and take a, a you know, a rolling average, yeah. you know, kick off the highest and kick off the lowest and then make an average of the rest. Um, so that's, I think, something we need to we need to develop before we get in this uh, this showdown with Hoovy. Well, uh, you know, Randy mentioned that uh, Donut is also doing it occasionally. Now, I I, oh, I really? know that as well, but yeah. I didn't meet the Donut guys and say I'm and doing a game rights, show yeah. about bring a yeah. trailer uh, using those exact words, and then a few weeks later he does that. So, yeah. uh, I mean, I'm sure when I'm sure Hoovy's going to say, like, I don't know who those are. I'm too big a deal. I watched Donut and thought it was a good thing. And did it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It I cost you fifteen thousand dollars to get a straight 15 answer. Grand, out of them, right? you, uh, who, Zach Miller was hanging out in the um, it was. In, what's up? Zach? Yeah. Wait what's up, Zach? How you doing? He was like, what? You have a, a trademark on this concept? I know, okay, thanks funny. for having our back. Funny. Zach, yeah. come on. I thought you were OG nerd herd. Uh, yeah. Welcome back, uh, Zach. like to see you in the comments. Uh, stick around. Um, all right. right, guys. Everybody go over to Hoobie's Garage, and let's try to ratio him over there. Tell all his fans that they need to watch the real uh, Price is Right game show uh, with Bring a Trailer over here on Bid Nerds. Grow that herd. Grow the nerd herd, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thanks to Our Smiths. Thanks to uh, Godden Classic and Godden Porsche of Las Vegas. Thanks to Max RPM, Alex up there uh, for having us last weekend. And uh, Thank make you, sure. Alex. Uh, you check out the latest films that we're putting up on Derfascination. And if you are looking to sell your car on an auction platform, my good partner right over here can help you out on the Haggerty Marketplace. Uh, so Absolutely. hit him up. He will get you covered there. Uh, we will see you guys Sunday night with Ray Shevska as the third nerd. And <coughs> oh, and also uh, Wade from Tech Daily will be back uh, in studio. Oh, He's actually back. In I like town. that guy. Yeah, we miss him. He's All so right. nice. We'll see you guys yeah. Sunday. Spread the word.